Welcome to a new Moho tutorial. Today, we will see how to create and animate a character from the sketch to its final animation. I already drew the sketch in Photoshop, and here I am simply drawing some lines in Illustrator. You can use any image of any character you want as a guide. Okay, to start we will go to File, and then to Project Settings to adjust the size of our project. 1920 by 1080 will be more than fine. To import your image go to File, Import, Image. I'm going to add a background, and I'm going to lower the opacity of my character. To do this, you must double-click on the layer of your image, and then go to Opacity. I will use a 20%. Okay, now let's add a new vector layer. There are basically two different tools for drawing in Moho. The freehand tool and the add point. If we choose the freehand tool, we will have a menu on top. The option of auto weld, auto close and auto fill, but right now I will not use the auto fill. Okay, let's try this. Imagine then you draw a figure and the auto close option is activated. Our figure will close, even if we are not close to the starting point. Using the Hide Edge tool will allow us to hide or make visible the lines of our drawing. Believe me, this is a valuable tool, and it will help us a lot. Okay, to fill this figure we can choose the color, and then with the Paint Bucket tool, we can fill it. Everything is quite similar to Photoshop or Illustrator. We can select the vectors and delete them. Or, with the Add Point tool, we can add them. If you want to work with curved vectors, simply select the tool curvature, then click on the vector and drag. You can even select more than one vector at the same time. With the tool draw shape, we will have the basic shapes available. And if we use the delete edge tool, that will erase each edge, until the figure is completely eliminated. If we erase a line from our drawing, don't worry, you can always redraw it. Okay, let's see the magnet tool. If you click Alt and drag, you can adjust its size. This tool will move all the vectors that are within its radius. Okay now, let's draw an extra shape to see how this works. If we have the auto weld activated, the lines will stick to our main shape. To paint it, we are going to use the Create Shape tool. To do this, first select the vectors, and then click on the Create Shape button. As you can see, now both figures are united. If by mistake you delete an internal line, you will lose the fill color. You can fix this selecting all the vectors with the Create Shape tool, and click on Create Shape. Okay, the other option is to draw with the Add Point tool. We will see that by default, we will only draw straight lines. If we do this, we can always use the Curvature tool anytime. So, the Line Width tool will help us to add thickness to our line. This is great to give more emphasis to certain parts of our drawing. And finally, as we saw, if we use the Add Point tool by default we will draw straight lines. But, if we uncheck the Shape Corner option, we will be able to draw curved lines. And that is how we will work on our character today. Look how the vector turns green as you approximate. This means that they will join without any problems, and you will hear a click indicating that both points were joined. Okay, I'll start by drawing the head, and I am going to draw it in three different layers. Then we will join each part using the bones. Remember that you can always hide lines without having to erase them. Okay, here you can see the whole head, which is in three different layers. One for the hair, one for the top, and another for the face. I also used the line width tool to make some parts thicker. For the ears, I followed the same procedure. Now, if you want to duplicate a layer, go to Edit, Copy Layer, and then Paste Layer. In the menu above we will have the options to flip horizontally or vertically. By doing this we can duplicate any part of the body, and that will save us a lot of time. 
Okay, I already have each part of the face. But let's talk about how to create the mouth. For that, I have three layers. One for the mouth, one for the tongue and one for the teeth. We are going to select the three layers, then right-click to open the menu and choose Group with Selection. This will create a folder with the three selected layers inside. Then you have to double-click on the folder and go to the masking menu. Click Hide All and then click OK. Perfect, now go to the mouth layer and double-click it. Go to Masking and then Exclude Strokes. And that's it, from now on, the mouth will work like a mask, and it's ready to be animated. Okay, let's see how it looks. You can make a small render by going to File, Preview. This allows us to see if there is some kind of error in the drawing. Okay, here's something wrong. Let's fix this shoulder line. Perfect, everything looks good. Now we can select all the layers, right-click to open the menu, and again, click on Group with Selection. Now we can have all our layers in the same folder. To start working with the bones, first we have to choose the folder that contains all the parts of our character. And then click on Convert to Bone. We will see that the folder icon is now a small bone. To create a new bone just click on Add Bone. Then click and drag to create it. Reduce the bone strength to zero, and then let's name the bone. You can even choose a color if you want to organize them by color. Click on Show Label to see the name of the bone. Then constrain its angle with a value of minus 90 and 90. Repeating this process, we are going to create several bones for different expressions. Always remember that you should reduce the bone strength to zero, and no bone should be attached to another. As you can see, I have two layers for the eyes, and I am going to repeat the same steps that we did with the mouth previously. We will first create a folder to contain both layers. Then in masking we will click on Hide All. And in the eyes layer, we will go to Masking, Exclude Strokes. Now the eyes will work as a mask and will allow us to work on our first action, the blink. First, I'm going to change the angle constraint to minus 90 and 0. Okay, to create our first action, we will go to Window, and then Actions to open our panel. Click on this button to create a new action. The action will have the same name of the bone that you have selected. In the animation timeline, we will go to frame 48, and then, we will move our bone to its final position. As you can see, if you navigate your timeline, you can see the bone moving. That means that we are ready to draw. Now, let's go back to frame 48 and then click on our eyes layer. Now we can move the vectors freely until we close his eyes. The frame 48 is just an example, you can choose and work on the frame number 1 if you want. But I recommend you to leave some space just in case. Okay, now you can test the animation by navigating the timeline, or by going back to the main line and moving the bone. Okay, now let's work on the smile. First, I'm going to set the angle constraint to minus 90 and 0. Then go to the action panel and click on new action. Let's go to frame 48 and always remember to place the bone in its final position. Let's start with the teeth, then the tongue and finally the lips. Always test the animation from the timeline to see if there are movement errors. I already have created two bones with which I made two animations, one for each eye. You can create all the animations you want. Let's see a preview. Okay, now let's try something a little more difficult. Let's make our character look up. First, I will set the angle of the bone to 0 and 90, and then I will change the name to a shorter one. Now we can create a new action. Let's go to frame 48 and move the bone to its final position. From now on, we will move all the parts we need to generate the expression we are looking for. Let's see how it looks. Now you can practice and make all the expressions you want, your imagination is your limit. 
Okay, now that we have the expressions ready, we will adjust the colors. Stitch actually has darker tones, so to do this, I already prepared a color palette. First select the layer. Then with the Select Shape tool, select the object you want. You can change the color from the color palette, or by using the eyedropper, just like in Photoshop. Okay, now we can adjust the rest of the colors. In the case of his nose, Stitch has a gradient at the top. To achieve this, simply select a vector and apply a color to that vector. You can even select multiple vectors at the same time to generate a larger gradient. Okay, now we can start working with the bones. I'll start by creating two bones for the body and one for the head. We will use the chest bone as the main bone. Select the chest bone and click Ctrl before creating a new chain. As you can see, by doing this, the new chain will be attached to the main bone. Let's fix this detail, so that the bottom bone is also attached to the main bone. Remember, select the chest bone and then click Ctrl before creating a new chain. In the case of the fingers, I'm going to select the arm bone first. Now, each finger will be attached to it. I will do the same with the legs. With the Reparenting Bone tool, you can readjust any bone. You can correct this at any time. I'm going to add some bones to the hair, they will work as dynamic bones. Now let's select all the bones and reduce the bone strength. Let's move the main bone to test the target bones. If you don't know how to create them, I will leave you in the description another tutorial where I explain how to do it. If you want to select a layer, you can press Alt and then right click on any part of the character you want to select. Then select the leg bones and press Ctrl, Shift, F. From now on that layer will be attached to those bones. Let's repeat the process for each part of the body. First, we select the layer, then the bones, and then we click on Ctrl, Shift, F. Okay, let's try the head movement. As we can see, the chest layer is linked to the chest bone and is not moving. To solve this, we will first select the head bone. Then, you have to select the layer you want to fix. Once you have done that, click on the I key or the bind points button. Now you can select all the vertices we need. Once you are done, hit enter. Let's try again. Okay, now it looks better. Let's repeat this process with the right hand. We first select the layer, then the bone, and then press the bind points button or the I key. Then select the vertices and hit enter. As you can see, each vertex will have the color of each bone so we can quickly identify them. Okay, let's use the bind points on his ear as well. If we move it, we will see that it is still affecting part of his head. So, let's use the bind points on the head as well. This will help each part of the body to be affected by its corresponding bone. Okay, now let's name the bones of his ear to be more organized, and then, let's try the movement. Well, here we have a problem, and to fix this, we will use smart bones. To do this, first select the bone, and then from the actions panel we are going to create a new action. This new action will have the name of our bone. Okay, now you can go to frame 24. 
You can choose the frame you want, but I recommend you to leave some space just in case. Move the bone as far as you think is necessary to create the animation. Then, simply correct the vectors that are wrong. From now on, that bone will have an action applied, and you will be able to move it without any problems. Let's repeat the same process with each bone that we see that causes errors. Here, we can see that when we bend the ear there is a problem. First, we will apply a new action for this bone. Then, we go to frame 24. We bend the bone and fix the vectors. Take your time to be able to move each bone, to test the limits of each bone, and see if the vectors fit them. We don't want to have parts that break when we move the bones. Okay, let's try a little animation. Then go to Motion Graph, right-click on a vector, and then click on Bezier. This will allow us to generate nodes in the vectors to make our animation more fluid. You can adjust the vectors to be able to work on the physics of the movements in the animation. This will help you to create slower movements, fast movements, or to control an increasing or descending speed. The more fluid your animation is, the more realistic it will be. In the same way as when we draw, you can create and delete new vectors within our motion graph panel. Don't forget that each bone that has a movement will have its motion graph allowing you to work each piece separately. Let's try a full body animation. By following all these steps, you will be able to create characters and animate them using bones, smart bones and actions. Making animations is something that takes time and Moho is one of the best programs that works with both the bone system and frame by frame animation, but we will talk about that in another video. The most important thing is to have a plan. Before starting, ask yourself what type of animation you want, how your character will move, how the head, arms and legs will move. Try different positions until you know which ones are the best for your character. If you want to make characters with more details in Photoshop, I will leave a link in the description with a tutorial explaining how to work with that type of characters. So, have fun bringing your characters to life. Please, leave comments if you want to see more tutorials about Moho, and subscribe to see other videos. So, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you next time.